I am doing my absolute best to not have a mental breakdown right now, but I'm just gonna give you a, a quick explanation. These past two days have been a couple of days that have just been one thing after the next consistently going wrong. To start this out, shout out to Masa. When we were leaving ours meeting yesterday, um, Masa actually ran my camera over with my lens, exploded it, and destroyed the body. I have this lens on there to protect the sensor. Hopefully we can get all of this repaired, but Masa ran my camera over. We lost my camera right after ours meeting, which that kind of started the down spiral. And then the real kicker here, so I took the memory card out of this camera, put it next to my, where is it? Put it next to my SD card holder and let it stay there for the night. When I woke up in the morning, I'm very organized with my footage. When I wake up in the morning, I always put my memory card that I'm using for the day in the camera, format it so that it's ready to go. Well, waking up and being careless, I grabbed the memory card from my Sony, put it into the camera you guys are watching right now, and formatted my entire day at ours meeting. All of my footage, all of my photos, all of the encapsulated memories that I made at ours meeting is gone. Everything, every single bit of it. Ours meeting was one of the best days of my entire life. Yes, I was there, I'm gonna have my own memories, but filming it, everything that I filmed, everything that I showed you guys, all the knowledge, all the things that we saw, it's all gone. And to me, this is my life, filming, editing. This is this is like my diary. This is my journal. This is what I have to, to remember everything. And my first time ever at ours meeting, one of the best videos that I feel like I've ever filmed is gone completely. I lost it all. Now I know there's various different uh, card recovery softwares. I've downloaded five of them, paid over $400 for three of them, and nothing has been able to recover any of the footage. Excuse me, sorry for my lack of enthusiasm here, but I, uh, I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown. First, my brand new $5,000 camera, and next up, all my footage. Oh, I get throw up. Oh, but, um, I don't know. What I'll what I'll do right now is I have I have some some phone clips that I filmed. I'm gonna make a I don't know a collage or whatever you want to call it in this. It's gonna be vertical, but that's literally all I have from ours meeting. My little phone journal of ours meeting. God. Where does he race mostly? Uh, used to the time attack. Oh, huh. wow. Scuba? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so sick, man. I love the wheels. I kind of race. He is beautiful. So cool, dude.
I guess this is after show catastrophe. I was filming. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue the destruction. Well, let, me, let me widen this here. I was uh, I was filming us leaving. Let me give you guys <laughs> one guess as you ran, who ran over my camera <laughs> or how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was filming us leaving and Masa decided that he was gonna projectile missile straight into my camera and Masa literally ran over bullseye. Bullseye, bullseye. I mean, it was the center of the tire. <laughs> he ran it over. Ran over my camera. And not only that, but literally two <laughs> seconds prior, Dustin goes, wow, imagine if Masa ran over my camera. And then we were, Masa, Masa, Masa. I can't wait to hear the footage. We're screaming, screaming, Masa. And then he hit it so hard that his car came off the ground. Yes. And it exploded my camera. Here, put the lens back on it, actually. I don't want to ruin the sensor there because the camera still technically works, but, uh, you can look through the viewfinder and it works. Oh, it's focusing. Yeah, I see. So you'll just have to film yourself like, just uh, put your hands, buddy. <laughs> look at my lens. <laughs> That's where his tire hit. It just ex it yeah, sheared it the metal, <laughs> snapped the cage off the. Oh, we well, you know it was a great day. So you couldn't be a great day without one thing just ruining, no the, good ruining, deed goes the, unpunished. ruining the rest of my great trip. Great deal on the brakes. <laughs> buys new camera. <laughs> Buys new car. Beats <laughs> new engine. <laughs> oh. oh, guys. Well, well, it was going to be a very cool shot leaving Fuji, and I was going to get a really sick picture in front of the we Fuji. We still can. Oh, technically, we still can. We still can. It's, it's okay, Look right? on the bright side. Uh, this might have a little damage, but... Oh, does it still turn? It's okay. Let's get the hell out of here, dude. I'm so over it now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's okay, Masa, if you're watching this. <laughs> it's not okay. It's not fucking okay. <laughs> So as we were leaving, this is my friend Shunsan, and we actually connected over Instagram, and we've always talked for so long. He caught me while leaving ours meeting. Shunsan, how'd you guys say? <laughs> this is so cool. I'm glad we were able to finally connect. Yeah. Your GTR is beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. Look at this brake upgrade. Right when we were leaving, I had to get a picture of our cars together because this is way too cool. Nice meeting you, Shunsan. Nice thank you, thank you. <laughs> we should run Togate together. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. Matane, see you in January. Yep. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. How cool I is that? I love this so much. Bye bye, Fuji Speedway. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. Thank you. I got to I love your YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a nice Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. bye bye. Look at this lineup. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's been a rough, it's been a rough trip for you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, Vasa. So anyways, I hope that gives you a mini look at how ours meeting was. It was one of the most amazing days of my entire life. The cars that we saw, the people that we met, the idols that I look up to in the GTR community or just in the car industry in general, the people that we saw, the things that we got. I mean, it was, it was amazing that I couldn't bring that to you guys. I feel like an idiot, I feel like I failed. But uh, anyways, we are, uh, we are heading to SEMA today. This is our last day in Japan. We're dropping off my 34 today, so I have to figure out my camera situation. Um, I'm not gonna have a camera for SEMA, so that's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Um, I have warranty, so hopefully we can bring it to get a little warranty, but we're gonna have to deal with it. I, today I was actually supposed to be shopping for my next Japan car. As you guys know, my 34 gets imported to the US next year, and in January, I'm actually dropping my R34. You would have known this if I had the R's meeting footage. I'm actually dropping off my R34 to Uchinagasan at Midori Seibi to start the high spec engine build when I come back to Japan in January. So the purpose of me getting to top rank a little bit early was to shop for a new Japan car that I can keep in Japan because I did decide to bring my R34 GTR back to America once it's done being built. This is one of the storage facilities at top rank. I'm not going shopping in here, but I always love to come see this. This is their warehouse storage of R34 stages full of R34s, some of the nicest and cleanest GTRs out there. This has got to be like millions of dollars worth of GTRs in here. It's pretty insane to see in person walking through aisles and aisles of M-Spec NERS, V-Specs. Look at this. 
That's pretty freaking cool. Anyway, some of these are sold, some of them are not. This is where my GTR actually lives when I'm not currently in Japan, so it's pretty cool. They have covered storage, they take care of it for you, they start it up, send you videos. You guys have seen that in the videos before. But I just wanted to show you guys really quickly how cool this warehouse filled with GTRs this is. It's pretty, pretty nuts to see. Look at this one, this one is so sick. Look at that front lip. I really, really want that hood. Oh my God. Let's go look at a couple of the cars I'm thinking of making my new Japan car and I wanna hear your opinion on what you guys think as well. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick trip to the PDI facility that Top Rank has and this is where they store all of their freshly imported cars mm -hmm. where they do some maintenance. Let's go check it out in here. This thing is still here. I absolutely love this last time. But this is where a lot of the maintenance goes down. This is where we picked up my R34 GTR when we first got it. It's a real Midnight Purple 2 V-Spec R34 GTR. That's it's a import eligible. Really? Oh, it's the, I mean, still have yeah. to work on the paperwork, but it's going to be imported soon. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. The color is really, really good on this. Oh, dude, the paint condition is immaculate. I mean, look, look. You can still see the shift, man, and it only needs a buff and it will look like It's very, very nice with yep. the TEs too. Oh, endless brake upgrade. Yep. And it's a old school logo front and back. We're gonna head back outside and there's a couple of cars I wanna check out are styles of cars. And I figured uh, I'd show you guys and see what your opinions are as well. Starting out, we have an S15. Now, don't look too hard. Don't- <laughs> Still in the works. <laughs> don't look too hard, but the purpose of my next Japan car is to buy something that is a little bit more of a beater. As you guys know, I love tracking my cars. I love running toge, and I want something that I can have fun while doing that, but also not having to worry as much as like an R34 GTR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, I beat the hell out of my GTR and I love it. Be nice to have something that I don't have to worry as much about, which is something like an S15, kind of like an R grade or a little bit more of a not as pristine. Yeah, I want a, I want a little bit of a beater and I think that's what I want to keep in Japan next. Like I said, something that I don't have to care about too much. And I was thinking having an S15, you can still track these, you can still have fun on the toge, mm -hmm. you can drift them, really like an all around fun car. And of course, who doesn't love a good S15? So this is one of the ones that I wanted to see. Let's take a look, Masa. Oh yeah. I hope it oh. still has a battery inside. It's kind of smelly too. Makes that even better. Look at this, the shifter. Man, this thing is a little beat, which is perfect though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got a nice little gauge right there. It's a good contender. And it has a very interesting, it's a vinyl leather seat. Yeah, it's got leather. Has the distinctive SR20 tone. Yep, yep. This is a good, good contender, right? Yeah, this is like the kind of condition that I'm looking for. It's a good car. It's like a good curbing. foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I'm on the toge, curbing a wheel or on the track, getting rock chips, I really don't want to have to worry about it. And I feel like this would be perfect. I mean, this is a def. This, this is a toge this car. This seems some better days for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a toge car. Mm -hmm. You, I hear that all the time at Toge, man. <laughs> like this noise. Yeah, I do hear a lot. Okay, so S15 is number one. Probably already a Toge car. Look, it's zero, zero horsepower. It's just zero horsepower family. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I need. Zero okay. horsepower. So, S15, contender number one. Let's mm -hmm. keep going. Next up, we have an FD RX-7. This is one that you guys know I've been wanting for a very long time. Now, but the question is, do I want it in America because it's very, very high maintenance or do we want it in Japan? I feel like it'd be very cool to have an FD here in Japan, but keeping up with a rotary, especially when I've never had one before, might be a little bit difficult, but ooh, this one's sick. Nice bridge seat on the inside. So fun fact, this car is actually coming to America anyways. Mm-hmm. Let's switch in and go. That is so good. But how sick would it be to have an FD in Japan? This is also a great Toge track car. Indeed. It's just that the maintenance issue is what is the, like the kicker for me, you know? Mm. Let's see. Oh, that is so good. That is... Most importantly, that. Oh, the pop-ups. <laughs> that is great. Pop-ups. Hit it, that. Car sounds.
sounds nasty. Just for that alone. Oh, it's so good. Look at this key, by the way. It's a rotary key. Yeah, I know. Contender number two. FD. I'll call. I will still call for S15 because it's JDM model. Yeah. Two. You get. You want to do basically everything, right? You want to learn how to drift. You want to learn how to go toge. Yeah. It's just a better car for it. But what do you guys think? I mean, we can always get an FD in America. That's another. That's another option. Yeah. We have one last one to check out, which is also a pretty high on the list car. Last but not least. Evo 6. As you guys know, from the past and currently, I have always been a huge fan of Evos. I've never owned a JDM Evo. We've had two Evo 8s, mm -hmm. three Evo 8s actually. Rusty, oh, The rusty one, oh, the, the white one, one, and then the red one, which have all been awesome. And as far as toge and track, this is an absolute monster. But only thing that this car doesn't have, what? rear wheel drive. Ah. It's all wheel drive. And I have so many all wheel drive cars. I have so many front wheel drive cars. I was really looking to get into something that's rear wheel drive, but Evos are just so damn good on the track and toge that this would be an absolute ripper. It'd be so much fun. I love these cars. But like I said, not rear wheel drive, but that's also like not like a, yeah, this is dead. Not like a super big issue because the car is so awesome, but Kind of, I was looking into, I was looking to get into something that was real drive, but the Evos, like I said, are just such a good car. I don't think it really even matters. But what do you guys think? I'm I'm looking for all three. We're gonna try and find one that kind of best suits me. We might even go to the auctions when I come back in January to look for one. Um, it just depends. But these are the three that I'm thinking about. Oh, that's nice. The gearbox and the Evos are so good. And it's cool because the Evo 6s have a while till they come to America, right? What year is that? Um, I think it would be around like 99, 2000. So maybe oh, around so the same time yes. you can import your 34. Right. So that's not too, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I do not know what to do. What do you think would be like the coolest car to have in Japan and also do toge and track? Why are you going for 90s JDM? You can go for a more, bit more modern. No, 90s JDM, dude. That's what I love. That's what I'm passionate about. It's got to be 90s JDM. And something that's cool because like we've been doing so many GTR shops that we can kind of branch off and maybe do Garage Mac or Aria Mia or something with Evos. Oh yeah, unlimited work, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something right? super cool. So like mm -hmm. a, like a different route, a different kind of Japan series with whatever car that we get next. Because um, once it's done being, once my R34 is done being built at, M at Midori Sebi, it's going to come to America and that's going to be just so cool. It's going to be like my centerpiece. I'm going to be so damn excited to have that car here or in America. So when we come back here, we need something cool to continue this series with. I don't know. I don't know. Masa's opinion? Masa's opinion. Go for S15. That's what I'm leaning towards too. What do you guys think? Let me know. It's definitely that time. So I like to do this every time I come to Japan. I always see how many kilometers we drove throughout the trip because I drive in Japan more than I drive anywhere else in the whole world. I love to explore the country every time I come in. So let's see, I stayed here for seven days and in seven days we drove 1,508 kilometers. I have no idea what that is in miles, but it's a ton for seven days. That's why I love this car so much because it's handled everything we put it through, all the toge runs, all the track driving that we've done. And now it's about to go to Midori Sebi and become a completely different car. This car is just gonna have so much sentimental value with me uh, once it comes home and it's just gonna mean the world. Really wish I had the cool footage from ours meeting, but I guess it could have been worse. I could I could have not been there at all. So take it for what it is, learn from your mistakes. I'm definitely never gonna make that mistake of formatting the wrong card again. At least I had the experience and at least I got to go in the first place. So it's time to drop off the R34, say goodbye. Don't worry guys, we'll be back in a few weeks. We are coming back in January for Auto Salon. And uh, yeah, I gotta, oh shit, jeez, jeez. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about my camera. <laughs>
Christian. <laughs>